Okay, so today is our Lives in Cooking with Chef Broussard. It is April 22nd. Um, and today I'm going to be doing a couple of things. I'm going to be making a pizza dough, and then I'm going to be turning that into a pepperoni stromboli. Okay. Um, so for students, just make sure you mark yourselves here in the chat box. And um, if you have any questions, unmute your mics and let me know. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is the pizza dough. All right. And this does take a little bit of time to rise when you're prepping this. So you can do this ahead and um, have it so that way, you know, you can freeze the dough, you can refrigerate the dough the day before, but you want to let it warm up and rise before you actually do that part of making the scramble. So the first thing that we're going to need is our two ounces of warm water. And I have that already pre-measured out here. I had it sitting on top of the oven that's already preheated to 400 degrees um, so that this kept it warm. You want to make sure that this is warm and not too hot, okay? Um, nothing over 110 degrees, so measure it on the back of your wrist like a baby bottle. Um, if it is too hot, it will um, kill off the yeast because yeast dies, the thermal death point is 138 degrees. So once it hits that point, the yeast dies off and stops doing what it needs to do. Okay. So then I'm going to take and add in a tablespoon of yeast. And this is just an instant yeast. Okay, you can see here. All right. So a tablespoon, nice and level. Um, you can also use a fresh yeast. So yeast is hard to find sometimes right now. Um, so for my students, like I said, send me your address. I'll ship you some. And... You can also look in the dairy section. So when you go in the dairy section, find somebody who works in the store and ask them if they have fresh yeast, okay? Um, that fresh yeast will um, work just as good, okay? It just has to stay refrigerated. So what I'm doing here is I have my water, my yeast, and I'm just giving it a little stir to break it up, okay? Let it start to activate. I'm already seeing some little bubbles. Um, you just wanna do this step first to make sure that your yeast isn't too old or that it's um, not active. Okay. All right. So I'm going to take, next step is I'm going to put the flour in. Okay. And I'm using a bread flour. If you don't have bread flour, can't find it, you can use all purpose flour. Just don't go with anything, any lighter strength than that. You don't want cake flour because it doesn't have enough gluten to work for a good pizza dough. But that's why I'm using the bread flour is because it um, has a much higher level of gluten, which is a good stretch for pizza dough. Okay. So I've got my little digital scale here. I'm tip this down so you can see, right? Um, if you are measuring this without a scale, that's fine. Um, it's about one cup plus three quarters of a cup of flour, okay? You can always add a little bit more if you notice that the dough is a little too sticky afterwards, okay? So I'm gonna do 14 ounces of bread flour. And I couldn't find a lot of bread flour. I was only able to find this small little two pound bag, okay? In. Handy dandy little flour scoop. All right, so 14 ounces on the nose, okay? Now the nice thing about this pizza dough is that it is uh, what they call a straight dough method which means that everything goes in the same bowl, right? So I've got my yeast and warm water. I've got my flour. I'm gonna add all my ingredients on top and just keep building it in the same bowl, okay? So next up is six ounces of cold water, right? Which I already have measured out here. So I'm just gonna add that water right in. Teaspoon of salt. So I'm using kosher salt. You can use regular table salt. That's fine. Just make sure it's a nice level teaspoon, right? So we got our warm water, our yeast, our bread flour, our salt, and then I'm gonna do two tablespoons of olive oil, okay? If you don't have that, you can use a vegetable olive, vegetable oil um, instead of olive oil. Just olive oil gives pizza dough a really nice, authentic flavor, right? So two tablespoons of that, just drizzle that in. Okay. And then honey. Okay, so I took the cap right off of it instead of trying to squeeze it through that little hole. Makes it a little bit easier. So a tablespoon of honey. And if you do the oil first, the honey, the honey will slide right out of the spoon, right? Okay, so now I'm going to take this off of my scale. 
and mix it. So hands have already been cleaned. The best mixing tools that you have are your hands, right? Um, so don't be afraid to get dirty. If you've got little kids in the family and things, this is a great part for them to do, okay? So I'm just gonna get right in here and start mixing this around. And it'll feel at first like it's not really coming together. Okay. But give it a second. Right. Really mix it around. Right. And it'll feel very rough and coarse. Okay. That's okay because I still have to knead this. I right, need to bring it all together. All right, so now I've got my dough together. Nice clean counter. All right, so things to keep in mind, sanitize your counters ahead of time and let that sanitizer dry. Don't wipe it and put any kind of food directly onto your surface, right? Cause you don't want that getting into the food, okay? So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start to knead this dough, okay? So the technique for that is just to take, fold it over and push it away, right? Fold it over, push it away and keep turning the dough. So see, I keep turning and knead. So I'm doing this for about three to five minutes, right? Um, I can go a little faster. I've done a lot of dough work over the years. So it comes together a little quicker. Miss, my dough looks like pancake batter. Add a little more water. Oh, actually, no, is it too thin? You can add a little flour in. So should I just add another? One of the packets? You can, yep. Or you can just add a little flour in until it gets to a thicker consistency. All right, so this could go a little bit smoother, but I'm gonna stop at this point so I can swap out and use some dough that I already did a little while ago. Okay, so I'm just gonna set this aside, let this rise. So this needs a good half an hour to rise when you make fresh dough. Um, so that way it's, has a chance to relax that glue, okay? So now here you can see this is the dough, the so same thing, right? Let me grab my other hand. So look at the size difference, right? So these till up doubles in size, right? And you can tell that it's rising. When you look here, right? Look at all those bubbles on the bottom, right? Now I'm just gonna punch this down a little bit. All right. I'm just gonna take my dough out. And you can see it's nice, soft, it's got a nice spongy texture to it, right? That's all that yeast doing its thing, right? So yeast, when you're working with it, right? Yeast needs to feed. That's why there's honey inside this dough, right? So it feeds off of sugars. And what the little yeast do is it kind of eat, eat, eat and then they burp, right? And give off gas, and that's what happens here with your rise, okay? That's the side. So now I'm gonna take this dough and I'm gonna cut it in half, okay? So just you can use a bench scraper type thing. Um, you can use a sharp knife. So I'm just gonna cut this in half. So I can do two separate strombolis, right? And this, why, this makes a good amount of food. So if you've got people in the family that don't agree on the same fillings, Right, you can make different flavors as you go, okay? So now I'm gonna take a little bit of flour, and this doesn't matter what type of flour, right? But just a little bit of flour on the surface. Don't need a lot. Right. Just push your extra to the side. Okay. And I wanna start off by kind of pressing this into a square shape, right? Stretch it a little bit for a rectangle. So I want this into a nice, long, rectangular piece. I've got my rolling pin. If you find that the rolling pin gets a little sticky anytime, just rub a little bit of flour on it, okay? So I wanna start to stretch out this dough and keep moving it so that way you know it's not sticking to your counter, right? You can do this on a big cutting board as well, right? But a nice clean counter works just fine. Stretch this, make this a little wider, and try and emphasize to get those corners if you can. Right, it'll make it a little bit easier when we go to roll it. Get 
this piece much bigger. So you want to roll it out to at least a good 12 to 14 inches in length, right? Now you can use canned um, refrigerated pizza dough. You can buy pizza dough frozen, um, but you want to make sure you thaw it and let it warm up before you try and do this step, right? You want it to be room temperature and pliable, okay? Now, the key with this too is that it doesn't get sauce on the inside. Sauce is going to be for the dipping, right? Which is what makes it fun. Okay. So I've got my dough stretched out. All right, I'm going to go a little bit more on this side. That way you guys can see. Okay. And then I've got some pizza cheese, but you can use any kind of cheese that you like, right? Um, this is just a straight up mozzarella, but you could do mozzarella, cheddar. Um, you know, a Mexican blend, you can mix it up. Um, you could do the same method with a Mexican cheese and do some taco, seasoned taco meat inside too and make like a taco tremble, okay? So what I'm gonna do is just sprinkle my cheese and I'll do this again with the other half so you can see too, more than once, right? So I wanna sprinkle the cheese out, but leave a little bit of an edge, okay? It's a nice, thin, even layer. I don't worry, because all my stuff's been cleaned and sanitized. Okay. So you spread that out. Then I'm going to put some pepperoni. All right, so I've just got some packaged pepperoni. You can buy the stick type um, and just slice it up a little bit thicker by hand. Okay. And a little bit of fun. I'm gonna add in a little bit of chopped up um, peppers that I had left from last week, right? So I don't wanna waste anything that's going on in my fridge or my pantry right now. So if you have other things, you wanna put a little bit of onion in here, a little chopped garlic, um, whatever stuff you like, then you're good to go, okay? So see it all laid out here. All right, and now I'm gonna roll it. So I'm gonna roll it going the short way over, okay? And that's why I left that little bit of an edge so that way I can pinch it and seal it after, okay? So I'm gonna start on one side and roll it up. Just keep taking everything with me, so right? So it's kind of like rolling a giant burrito, right? So just keep rolling, rolling. And that's why, same thing, reason why you leave the edge, right? So now I have a little bit of space so I can roll it over, right? Put your seam down on the bottom. Now on the ends, we wanna tuck this in so that all our stuff doesn't fall out, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tuck down in the bottom and I'm gonna pull this top edge over and seal it up. Okay, I'm gonna do that again. Tuck in the bottom. Wrap it up and seal it. Okay. So now I'm going to come in too, just with a little sharp serrated knife, I'm going to make a couple of pressure cuts in the top of the dough, okay? And that'll help it have a place to stretch, okay? Because I don't want it to explode out the side. I want to control where it's going to cut. And you have to do that anytime you're using bread doughs. So now I'm going to take that, and back here, I've got a cookie sheet with my silicone mat on it. You can do this with parchment paper. Um, or you can just do a cookie sheet with a little bit of little stick spray, right? Um, so I'm gonna do second half of this dough here. More flour down. All right. Like I said, if the dough has a nice chance to relax, it's a lot easier to work with. Okay. So I'm gonna put more flour on my pin. Keep that rectangular shape. And this is just a great fun, you know, night, you know, dinner time. You know, make a batch of these, slice it up, serve it with some pizza sauce on the side, a little salad. You're good to go. Right? Get all your food groups in. Stretch. I just need a little more flour underneath. 
little sticky spot. Don't be afraid to add a little extra. Just You don't want to add too much flour because it'll dry out your dough. Okay. So I'm trying to keep that angular shape. There you go. A little thick on the side here. Yeah. And we're gonna fill it. So I'm gonna do the same thing again so that way you get to see it second time for all the techniques. Okay. So I'm gonna come in with my mozzarella. And I'm gonna do a finish on the top of this after. So you'll notice when you guys look at your recipe sheets for this week that there are some other ingredients I haven't used yet, which are gonna go on the top on the outside. We want to get these done first. A nice layer of cheese. Same thing, pepperoni. And they said, if you don't like pepperoni, use something else that you have. You have a little bit of um, deli ham or some salami. Maybe some leftover chicken breast from dinner the night before. Shred that up, throw it in here. Right, this is a great way to use stuff up. Everybody can kind of come in and make their own flavor. Okay. And then we're gonna use some more of those peppers. I like to have a little something in there. A little crunch, a little color. Okay, and then same thing, I'm gonna roll it up. So when you're rolling that edge, right, bring that first side up. Kind of press down as you go. Okay. Roll. Roll. All right, so we get to that other end. Seam side down. Okay. So remember to tuck in the bottom. Pull your door over, give it a good little pinch on the end. Make sure it seals up. I don't want all my cheese oozing out the sides. Okay, and then a couple of cuts. And I usually do them on an angle. There's no purpose for that other than it makes it look pretty, right? Bring that over here. Now, for our last little secret, right? So if you've ever gone to Pizza Hut and you like their breadsticks and like the topping that goes on the outside, right? This is the same type of thing, okay? So I've got here, just a little bit of olive oil and a pastry brush, right? And you can do this just with your fingers. You know, just dip your fingers in some oil and spread it on, right? You wanna make sure you cover the whole top and down to the sides, right? This will help give us a really nice, pretty golden color on the crust too. And then I'm gonna sprinkle a topping on top. I'm gonna make it takes a couple of seconds. You know, but if you've been eating a lot of pizza lately, and I know everybody likes pizza, I mean, I usually, you know, it takes me quite a bit to get sick of it, you know, but it gets boring, right? So you want something that's a little interesting. So this is the same way to use that great pizza dough, um, but mix it up, okay? So now, the next part of your recipe is for the topping part, okay? So right here, I've got this little guy here, um, just some Parmesan cheese, right? Grated Parmesan cheese, you can use the kind and the shaker one. So I'm gonna put two tablespoons of that. Right? And it doesn't have to be super precise, okay? Um, you know, if you like something, use a little more, a little less, okay? tablespoon of oregano. Now, if you don't have just straight up oregano, you can use a little uh, Italian seasoning, a little rosemary, All right? Just kind of go raid your spice cabinet and see what's kicking around from the holidays, All right? I'm gonna do two teaspoons of garlic powder. Then we're just gonna give this a little stir. Right. So this just makes a super yummy topping. Like I said, you can also use this pizza dough, roll it out and make it into breadsticks, right? And then you just put this on top. Okay. So 
we've got our topping now. The key with this, right, is that I want to cover everything, okay, on the top and the sides. So sprinkle really good on the top. And then when you're doing the sides, it's hard because it rolls down, right? Cup your hand to the side as you sprinkle it down, and then use your hand to press that back up. Okay. You'll get a little bit on the mat, and that's why I'm using this mat in the first place, right? It's because I want to control where this is all going. And I'll reverse this in a second and do the other side. All right, so nice, generous coating. And this is just going to give it a really nice flavor on the outside of that crust. Right. I'm going to spin it. Look at that. All right. Come down this side. And the end here. So just use up what you've got in your cabinet. You know, if it's something you don't like or you can't have, you know, leave it out and put something else in. Um, you could also do things, you know, a little crushed red pepper or stuff like that. That's it, right? So now I'm going to take this and put it into a 400 degree oven that's already been preheated, right? While I've been doing this. Um, and about 15 minutes, okay? You want to wait until you see it get a little bit bubbly. You're going to get a nice golden color on the crust, and I'm going to show you that in a second. In the oven, this goes. Let me clean up a little of my mess. All right, remember, clean as you go. You don't want your mom's getting mad at you, making a big mess in her kitchen. So now, I already did one of these earlier, right? So powers and magic of television. Here is the finished stromboli, okay? Look at that, right? So now, serrated knife, something with teeth on it, right? So even if you just got a little steak knife in the drawer, okay? And I'm gonna cut this. This has been resting for a little while. This came out of the oven a little while ago, so it's cooled down quite a bit. But after it just came out of the oven, give it five minutes for the cheese to kind of settle and set itself before you slice it up, right? And then look at that on the inside, right? So all those layers of cheese, right? And I like to cut things on an angle. We call that a bias cut, right? And look at that topping, right? So you can get quite a few pieces out of this. You can see it in there, okay? Open that up a little bit so you can see, okay? So you see that. So now I have pizza sauce, okay? So that was on your list. So I just have some sauce I heated up here. I've been keeping it warm on the top of the oven, right? And this is just a jar of pizza sauce, right? Nothing fancy. Um, if you don't have pizza sauce at home and all you have in your cabinet is a little can of tomato sauce or some crushed tomatoes or something like that, throw that on the stove, get it good and simmering, add in your own spices, add a little crushed red pepper, um, black pepper, you know, oregano, garlic, and all those things. Add a little Parmesan cheese into the sauce. Um, you can definitely mix it up and um, make the sauce however you want, right? And then that's for dipping. So then you take, you know, your sauce, give everybody a little bowl. Okay. Go back. And there's your finished dish. Okay. So stromboli, easy to do. It's a great weeknight meal, um, but it's a great way to use up your leftovers, too. Okay? All right. So I'm going to stop recording and say goodbye. And then we'll